So I live here, roughly, roughly right in there. So all these lakes right here, the wind comes straight down, straight down, gets cold, 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 gathers up moisture, and then just boom, dumps it right on us. How's it going, guys? Um, are you cold? I'm cold. Not right now, but like outside it's cold. I'm a little chilly, but outside it is freezing, guys. It is the middle of winter time. And uh, so I decided to do this video right here by Lost in the Pond. I've done some videos by him before. You probably know who he is. His name is Lawrence. And he has the channel Lost in the Pond. And this video is called British Blizzards Ain't Got Nothing on America. And that, I believe, is true, especially in northern Indiana. We get a lot of lake effect snow coming down. Uh, you know, the air comes down from Canada. It blows across the uh, the Lake Michigan. And then we get that lake effect snow. And it just dumps on us right here. It's it's terrible. It really is. But anyways, links to the original video in the description section down below. Um, go ahead and hit like. Hit subscribe. And let's watch this. Well, it's that time of year again when America becomes a desolate hellscape. And <laughs> as of five right. minutes ago, my weather alerts are saying that there's a blizzard heading straight for Chicago. Wait, no. Five hours ago. <laughs> but back when I lived in Britain, a blizzard was a bit like the census. You only had to worry about it once every 10 years. In Chicago, I'm already on my fourth blizzard in eight, and that excludes trips to Dairy Queen. I'm Lawrence, and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond, and one of those memos pertains to buzzards. Blizzards. <laughs> Yeah, his channel's great. And since you are likely snowed in yourself, why not begin your new binge? If you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, do that now. Go do it. He's got a good channel. In the meantime, allow me to give you insight into North American blizzards while simulating one. It's the best I could do at such short notice. <laughs> The truth is, while winters are generally getting less severe in the Windy City, I still consider blizzards a staple of Midwestern winters. It's perhaps fitting then that the very word blizzard skyrocketed in use following one particular Midwestern season. The hard winter of 1880 to 1881. And if you think I'm being hyperbolic, that's literally what the event identifies as on Wikipedia. Basically, the Great Plains, okay. which the Census Bureau somehow defines as Midwestern, endured a winter storm that can so I live here, roughly, roughly right in there. So all these lakes right here, the wind comes straight down, straight down, gets cold, 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 gathers up moisture, and then just boom, dumps it right on us. It's, it's a terrible place to be in the winter. Continued on and off for six months. I bet Laura Ingalls Wilder's parents were like, I hope you're taking notes. And she was. <laughs> the storm was so bad that Wilder recalled it 60 years later in her book, The Long Winter. But whether it was long or hard, it was extremely cold, to the extent that none of the men felt comfortable making sex jokes out of this sentence. Sections of the transcontinental <laughs> railroad were completely buried. Even Francis Bourgeois would have been mad about that. As Wilder herself wrote in The Long Winter, Railroads, they good to have, but the trouble is, folks get to depend on them. Some more than others, many set up their lives within reach of the railroad in order to receive critical shipments. During the hard winter, those very often never came. Yeah, I bet. Clearly, in 2024, blizzards aren't the same problem they once were, especially since I have central heating and a Prius. But as somebody who grew up in the Seattle of Europe, Midwestern blizzards are still a shock to the system. Firstly, they bring a lot of snow in a very short space of time. Secondly, you receive weather alerts that are so poorly formatted it looks like the storm hit them. And after reading it for the seventh time, I managed to glean the following information. Number one, there will be heavy snow. I think we got that memo. Number two. So cold, too. So cold. Sometimes we have 50 mile an hour wind gusts. That makes it even colder. Ugh. Two, travel could be very difficult to impossible. Which is all good and well to note while sipping coffee in the comfort of your new studio. Less so when your home is 100 miles away and you're sitting in the passenger seat of a Prius. <laughs> but oh, that yeah. is. Drive slow. This is what happened to me and my wife in northern Indiana exactly a few years ago, approximately. We had taken a once-in-a-lifetime vacation to the bountiful kingdom of Indianapolis. By then, nothing more than a snow-covered dystopia. After our stay came and went, we braved the snow, still relatively light at this point, and headed back to Chicago. All seemed to be going well until we pulled into a McDonald's, which is where my problems always seem to start. Nothing 
McDonald's. Yeah, <laughs> don't even get me started on that. As I bit into my filet fish something didn't feel right. And I'm not just talking about the bones. A poorly formatted alert entered my inbox bearing the words, travel could be very difficult to impossible. And at that very moment, almost as if I'd embellished the timing of it to move the story along, the snow went completely and utterly a little bit silly. The cars in front <laughs> became invisible, which between that and the slippery roads probably accounted for several accidents. Thankfully, yeah. we were not among them. As traffic I've seen worse than that. I've seen it to where the visibility was down to just a few feet. And and actually traveling back from Indianapolis myself one time, I wasn't even able to get there. Like, I couldn't see anything. Like, I had to rely on the brake light, like the tail lights from the vehicle in front of me and just hoping that they stayed on the road. Because And, and if I got, like, even a foot behind them, I couldn't even see anything. Like, I had to stay, like, within three or four foot from the back of their vehicle, which is driving too close. But... I, I, I didn't have a choice, and it took hours to get back. Traffic slowed down to a crawl, or in some cases a slide. We found ourselves having to make a decision. Press on to Chicago, knowing we wouldn't be home until June, or pull over <laughs> and wait out the storm at Denny's. We did the latter, even if our server Debbie wasn't happy that I'd snuck in McNuggets. One hour <laughs> and 1246 calories later, the snow halted and we slowly made our way home. Until today, I'd not told anybody that story except for Debbie, who offered her sympathies in no way whatsoever. <laughs> of oh, course, the snow isn't even the worst part of a blizzard. The worst part about blizzards is the use of the word snowmageddon by American news anchors, but it's also the wind. Because something that I didn't tell you about today's poorly formatted weather alert is that it predicted that the wind would reach 45 miles per hour. <sighs> Yeah. Whether or not this was accurate doesn't matter because once the winds exceed 25, your face begins to hate you. Between the snow, the wind, and concerned calls from my Aunt Cynthia, it's easy to forget the most exciting part. The I was outside chopping wood for the fireplace and I got I ended up getting frostbite. Not like a, mi a minor, minor case of frostbite, but on these two fingers here and it ended up turning white and then it ended up blistering and I still can't feel the tips of my fingers. They're actually really numb and that was like probably five days ago. But the blistering went down. The skin's not white anymore. But it did have a slight bruise on it, actually. It hurts so bad, so bad. The degree to which the snow settles. And when I say most exciting part, I'm really paraphrasing my dog Arthur, who is under the mistaken belief that all of this is the greatest thing that has ever happened. What he doesn't <laughs> know is that it's us humans who have to deal with the fallout. Whether it's shoveling off the balcony over concerns it may collapse into the mudroom below. I've just realised that I've been dropping all of this snow onto our outdoor grill. Or remembering <laughs> the exact location of ankle-breaking potholes that this adorable little f created or figuring out a plan for when all of this melts because something that i forgot to mention about the hard winter of 1881 is that much like the trains it came to a grinding halt spring very suddenly brought about warm temperatures and the people most affected by the blizzards now had to contend with widespread flooding oh, so yeah. i just hope that sunday isn't unseasonably warm otherwise my basement might leak a little bit I have good news and bad news. The good news is my basement's fine. The bad news is my basement is fine because it is minus nine degrees Fahrenheit outside. For yes. context, that's nine degrees more frigid than London's coldest ever temperature. In Chicago, this is known as an annual tradition. And that brings me on to my own annual tradition, which is to tell my audience that despite everything, I'm going to embrace winter this year. Well, that ends today. No more toxic positivity. No more, isn't snow fun? I've Snow's not fun, it sucks. Had it. Instead, I'm gonna embrace misery. Cold, hard misery. Thanks for watching. No, I'm being told we can't finish with that. Back to Lawrence in the audio booth. Thanks, Lawrence. Now, January might be the Satan of calendar months, but if those who experienced the hard winter of 1881 were still alive today, it would be a miracle because nobody lives that long. But if they were, they'd probably marvel at how far we've come in weather preparedness and how we in the 21st century take for granted electricity and heating systems because we've never known anything different and how the American office should have finished after Michael left. I mean, that's got nothing to do with this, but they would think that. Anyway, for the first <laughs> time in as many days, I'm sitting here in my basement hiding from sub-zero temperatures. If you are doing the same thing or happen to be impacted by the big freeze, I raise an invisible glass to you and hope that we get through this the way that grown humans should. We're by trying. just being sensible and wearing a coat. Thank you again to my <laughs> patrons who never got to see me on this week's secret live stream because the big freeze hit my internet connection. However, yep. if you would like to become a patron or a ponderer of lost...
Yeah, go check out his Patreon, guys. Uh, go check out his channel. Links will be in the original description. Uh, the links to the original video will be in the description section down below. Stay warm because it's cold around here. You'd be lucky that you're not dealing with this. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a super fun, awesome day. Take care.